I can't be silent about it here. You know, the great scandal of the international arms trade. And you said the money, which is the money that got most of the people in that hall elected, mm -hmm. <laughs> is dripping with blood, with innocent blood. And I was very struck by that, and I was struck later how even the New York Times had had a point-by-point -point analysis of everything he said, just left that completely in, 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 in the dust. And none of the members of Congress who talk you know, immigration, climate control, all these things we can talk about. But 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 the Pope's words on, on the international arms trade were just not not uh, not not to be discussed. Um, also, I, I I Thomas Merton. <clears throat> who uh, I, I was really glad that he was being introduced to to, 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 uh, to a new generation of Americans. And uh, he was somebody who died in 1968, um, uh, Trappist monk, um, who was very much involved in interfaith dialogue. He translated the works of the Sufi masters and the, uh, and, uh, 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 the Zen masters and uh, uh, was you know, very much a visionary and a mystic, but before he was any of these things, when he was just out of college, and he was in, uh, in 1940, he had been raised, uh, he had an American mother and a father from New Zealand, and he was raised uh, mostly in France and Great Britain, and was in, uh, when the war broke out, he was in, uh, in the United States at a, a student at Columbia University. And, but the war was going on already. This was before Pearl Harbor, but the war was going on in you know uh, places that he considered his home at that point. And uh, two years ago, I went through and read as many of his journals as I could get my hands on. And he wrote this uh, when he was not much older than a lot of the students here in 1940, uh, June 24th. He said, "We have not even desired peace." except for the wrong reasons. Because we didn't want to get hurt. We didn't want to suffer. If we are ever going to have peace again, we will have to hate war for some other reason than that we fear to lose our houses, our refrigerators, our cars, our legs, our lives. If we are ever to get peace, we, must, we have got to desire something more than anesthetics. That is all we seem to want, anything to avoid pain. It's terrifying that the world doesn't wake up to this irony. That, it, that at a time when all our desire is nothing but to enjoy pleasant sensations and avoid painful sensations, there should be almost more pain, more suffering and brutality and horror, and more helplessness to do anything about it than there ever was before. I think this speaks to the to to our topic tonight of the drones of uh, the idea of uh, that we could have a war and not get hurt. That we can engage in battle, engage in combat, various parts of the world, and our soldiers don't need to face the hardships of war. They sleep in their own beds, go home to their families. Um, uh, they're not in danger of, of, of uh, becoming imprisoned or, or being maimed or killed on a battlefield. Um, they don't even have to miss a shower. Is that we can have a war where we don't get hurt, and where the war can be kept way over there. And I'll just, uh, if some of you don't know what this drone technology is, is very, very simply, <clears throat> there's the two armed drones that the United States has deployed at present. The, uh, Predator is a little airplane without, they're airplanes without pilots. The Predator is about a 30 foot wingspan, and the Reaper is twice that size. And um, gasoline powered motors, they move very, very slow, like a top speed of about 90 miles per hour, like they're like they go on highway speed. They're, uh, and they're armed with 500 pound bombs and Hellfire missiles. And they're launched from the ground overseas. And once they're up in the air, by satellite, with a satellite connection, they're controlled by, uh, by soldiers in the United States who are sitting in offices or in trailers in the desert, and they're sitting at computer screens. 
and the they have some pretty high um, resolution video that they're watching things on the ground thousands and thousands of miles away, and they will uh, actually engage. It'll actually from sitting at you know with with, with a uh, actually with controls that are designed after PlayStation. The soldiers will will find their targets and they will fire and they will they will kill people. Now the sounds, um, when I first got involved in this in 2009, uh, because the, the, the first drone victim uh, was in November of 2001, so 2002, early 2002, I get the date. Uh, in the mountains of Afghanistan, uh, it was announced that, uh, that uh, Osama bin Laden had been found in the then they had to take it back a little bit later. And just a very tall person who, who was scavenging scrap metal to make a living, who looked enough like 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 him that the drone operators thought, yes, we've got him. They locked him and they killed him. It's not ironic that the very first uh, drone victim was a was a mistaken identity. Um, but like, but even amongst our friends, it was. So then after 2009, when Obama, President Obama came in, he really ramped up this program where now it's, it's, um, it's huge and the U.S. Air Force is training uh, more drone pilots than, than any other kind of pilots. Other kind of pilots than that. And we have drones operating in uh, more countries than, than we know of. So even among our friends in the peace movement, there was some question why we were protesting this. and. And, uh, you know, it's just a weapon system, and it's you know, just one more, and it's been described as benign and precise and surgical. Um, we can kill our enemies uh, and not, you know, without saturation bombing, without soldiers on the ground. And those of us in the peace movement were often challenged, like, are you just against everything the military is doing? Can't you accept that maybe there's something, that some kind of advance that's possible that they're making things better? Uh, May of May 23rd, 2013, I was, it was the last day of a six month prison sentence for me. I was arrested at Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, another drone base, um, uh, trying to bring a letter of protest on. Base. My last day in, the, in prison, I heard uh, President Obama give an impassioned defense of the uh, of the drone program, and he did a very good job. I was heartened at first only because I knew the only reason why he was talking in front of the world about drones and trying to justify it was because people like me would been doing what I was sitting in jail for. Uh, but he said, one of the things he said here, and this was at the National Defense University in Washington, he said that conventional air power and missiles are far less precise than drones and likely to cause more civilian deaths and local outrage. But only about three weeks later, the very same National Defense University um, issued a, a, a study refuting the claim, and they said that drone strikes in Afghanistan were, quote, an order of magnitude more likely to result in civilian casualties per engagement. And despite the president's assurance to the contrary, um, the drone strikes were caused immense local outrage in the countries where they happened. Uh, Stanley McChrystal was the U.S. Army general who was in charge of NATO forces in Afghanistan. And after he retired from that job, he said, uh, what scares me about drone strikes is how they are perceived around the world. The resentment created by American use of unmanned strikes is much greater than the average American appreciates. They're hidden on a visceral level, even by people who've never seen one, or seen the effects of one. Just uh, this last Saturday, and this wasn't... Uh, I don't believe that the drones were involved in any way unless they may have been involved in, in, in 
and surveillance uh, of this hospital in the Congress is uh, right on Saturday morning, there's a hospital in Congress run by doctors you know, without borders, and the only hospital in the city. And it was destroyed, some 20 people, including doctors and workers and, and patients who were burned to death in their beds by an American airstrike. And there are four different contradictory stories that have come out about how this came about. And even then, the president's saying he's really sorry it happened, but there will, will not be an independent study of, of investigation of how this came to be. Uh, and this, this sparked a memory in my mind, and I had to go back on the internet and look this up. And, uh, and, and my memory served me right. And this goes to what the president was talking about, local outrage that supposedly the drones are not, are, are you know, that we're so concerned about. Now, in November 8th, 2004, this was in the New York Times, and in March of 2004, April 2004, there was a terrible event in the city of Fallujah, Iraq, um, it was early in our occupation of that country, where um, some American contractors, uh, mercenaries for Blackwater, had been kidnapped and killed and their bodies hung in the bridge at Fallujah, and the United States came in and was just with all kinds of firepower. And the people rose up and they they, they fought against the American soldiers who, who attacked them. Uh, six months later, they went back and attacked again. And the first place they attacked was the hospital. They destroyed the hospital at the very beginning of that attack. And this is from the New York Times. Uh, it was the second time in six months that the battle raged in Fallujah. In April, American troops were closing in on the city center when popular uprisings broke out in cities across Iraq. The outrage, fueled by mostly unconfirmed reports of large civilian casualties, forced the Americans to withdraw. Local outrage forced the Americans to withdraw. Why were the people outraged? <clears throat> well, American commanders regarded the reports from the hospital as, as inflated, but it was impossible to determine independently how many civilians had been killed. The hospital was selected as an early target because the American military believed it was the source of the rumors about heavy casualties. It was a center of propaganda, a senior American officer said. So it's the same military thinking. There is local outrage. People are outraged over the reports of civilians being killed by American forces. We will destroy the hospital. There will be no reports of civilian casualties. The outrage will be done. So this, this is the way they're thinking. And this is now, now this thing very piously, of course we would not, 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 not purposely attack the hospital. Um, 